welcome back everybody. Let's talk about modes. Now this is an extremely frustrating topic, not only as a student, but also as a teacher, because it's just the teachers and the students are not coming at this from the same perspective in a lot of cases. So the way that it's taught is usually uh, pretty terrible uh, from my perspective, uh, just not useful at all. And that makes students wonder, like, why in the world am I doing this? Uh, so for example, if you had uh, the key of C, That feels like a particular thing, right? But if I change that and I go like this. Right? Well, now I've changed some of the notes. I'm still beginning and ending on C, but I've altered some of the notes in the middle. And that feels way, way different than the, the main C major scale. So um, C major and whatever this thing was, those are like two entirely different feels, right? Well, why would you ever want to use? Why would you even have that? If you wanted that sound, you would have that. That's the whole point of that thing, of having that, is if you ever needed that feel, you should be able to know how to make that feel. And if you want the regular... If you want that feel, you should know how to make that feel. That's all the modes are. Each one of them is just their own different landscape, their own feel, their own atmosphere that you can put a song or a solo or a part of a solo in to uh, give it just a little bit different flavor. So that's what the modes are. That's why you'll need them. However, some of them are so similar that it takes a lot of listening just to be able to tell the difference between the two of them. So for example, this thing right here. Like that feels kind of like, uh, it, still, it still has that like dreamy feeling. That feels kind of like, they're only really subtly different. They both have the very, very similar uh, atmosphere to them. They, they both may evoke the same emotions in you, but they're a little bit different. And if you wanted exactly that feel instead of that feel, then uh, you should know how to make each of those. So that's kind of where like modes, for some people, it's, it might just be too early to get into modes because like you can't really hear the difference between those. You got your major scales, you get your minor scales, maybe a blues scale, and maybe that's all you can hear for right now. And you won't get into the like wanting or needing a mode or recognizing a mode until later. So some of it is a little bit too, too nuanced for beginners to really pick up on, but that's kind of the idea behind modes, or at least it's supposed to be but again, the way that it's taught traditionally is kind of stupid. If we take a look at the traditional method of teaching these things, uh, we usually get the numbers in order. You learn that Ionian is the first mode and that uh, there are no alterations to it. And the Dorian is the second mode. And that is the one that you would flat the seven and flat the three. Phrygian is the name of the third mode, and you would flat all those things. Lydian is the fourth mode, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and then Locrian. And then you're supposed to memorize these in order. So you can go Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and know that those are the ones in the right order. So that when your teacher asks you, what's the third mode, you can say Phrygian. And still have no idea what that means or what to do with it. Oh, it's a flat seven, flat three, flat six, flat two. Still, why? What's the point? Why have I memorized all this stupid stuff? So here's the way that I think that it should be taught. And I've seen some teachers that I really respect teach it this way. So I, I'm not alone in this, but uh, the numbers don't really matter. Honestly, the names don't really matter either, but whatever, you got to call it something. So the first mode would be called Ionian still. Uh, all the names would be the same, except we're switching the numbers of them. We're putting them in different orders. We'll talk about what these numbers mean in just a second, uh, but they're not really that important. Okay, so Ionian would be the first mode, and that's where you just play a regular scale. And then I would learn these things in the order that the alterations come in. So Mixolydian has a flat seven. Well, every single one of them after that also has a flat seven. But when you move to Dorian, you add in a flat three. I know this still isn't making sense. Hang on, just stick with me. We'll get there. But hopefully you can see this one, the progression of this one is a little bit more natural in that you're keeping whatever you had before, flat seven, flat three. Well, now we're gonna do flat seven, flat three and add the flat six. Okay, now we're gonna keep those three and add the flat two. Um, there's only one of them down here that does not like 
stay with the theme and do all the stuff before and add one more. So this is the order that I think they should be taught in, but it's still not helpful. What does this mean? Why am I learning this? At the end of the video, you're going to want to come back to this thing and go, oh, yeah, okay. So that makes a lot more sense, and that's why I would want to memorize them in that order. So I'm just throwing it in there because later on it's going to be important. Let's talk about the way these things are traditionally taught. This is one more stupid thing, and then I'll actually give you some really actual helpful practical advice. Okay, so here we are. This is the uh, modes, the way they're traditionally taught. So you're taught that this is the key of C. And that is beginning and ending on the first note in the C major scale. So this is the first mode, and the first mode is called Ionian. Now, if you begin and end on the second scale degree, that is the D in this case, this right here is called the Dorian mode. It's the second mode of a major scale. It just means you're beginning and ending on the second note. So that's Dorian. Then Phrygian, of course, is on the third note of the major scale, and you're playing from the third note up to the third note. So that means if you're told you're supposed to play in E Phrygian, you're supposed to ask yourself, E is the three of what? And if you can figure out that E is the three of C, you're supposed to just pretend like you're in C, but begin and end on E. Again, why? We don't know. This is just the way that it's taught. That's E Phrygian. It's the third mode. It's the same as C, but you begin and end on E. No, you don't. That's the thing. You know this. I know this. You don't begin and end on anything. The only time you actually ever play this is when you're practicing scales. That doesn't show up in any songs. Maybe you got one or two or three songs that are actually going to play through a major scale. But other than that, you're jumping all over the place. Well, if we're jumping all over the place, what's the point of E Phrygian since it's supposed to begin and end on E? We'll get there. Let's finish the stupid stuff. Here we go. Lydian is the fourth mode. It's beginning and ending on the fourth note of the major scale. Now, for some of you, this is news. This is interesting. This is kind of cool. Not at all practical, but kind of cool. I will throw in at this point that uh, for guitarists, modes can serve a different purpose because of the way that they're laid out on the fretboard on the neck. Uh, then the, learning your different modes can actually help you in the um, in the playing ma the major scales, the normal major scales, because you have different positions you're supposed to play your scales in. Uh, if you're a pianist, uh, that didn't make any sense at all, and that's perfectly okay. Uh, so, but modes do for guitarists uh, kind of serve a different purpose. Uh, but on piano, like we're not, you know, if we're playing an E Phrygian, we're gonna play all these notes in somewhat random orders, like. Like what mode was that? Well, that was that was C Ionian and D Dorian and E Phrygian and F Lydian and all the rest of them. I'm just still trying to point out how stupid this is. But this is all you get. This is this is modes. This is the normal way to go through learning modes. So they also might throw in that uh, Lydian. You'll notice that this looks just like the F scale, like that. That's an F scale. But if you sharp the fourth note, if you raise it a little bit, then you get F Lydian, and that is the same as C major. It's not, but that's what they say. So F Lydian is the same as C major. Next we have Mixolydian, and this is the fifth mode. And again, they, they might tell you it was the same as G major, except you flat the seven. So if you flat the seven of a major scale, you come up with the Mixolydian mode. Still, no idea why. That's the uh, fifth mode. Here's the sixth mode. This is the only one that actually gets slightly interesting. This is also known as a natural minor scale. If you practice your regular minor scales, your natural minor scales, uh, then you would recognize this one as being, hey, the Aeolian mode, that's the same thing as minor, isn't it? Yep, it's the same thing as minor. It's also the sixth mode of the C major. And then for some of you, it'll click like from your lessons a long, long time ago. Oh yeah, there's that thing called uh, relatives and C major and A minor were relatives. I got no idea what that means. That's what that means. It means, hey, they use all of the same notes. 
Then we've got the other one that no one really knows why we have it, and that's the Locrian mode. And uh, that's the seventh mode, and it sounds like that. And uh, then we're back to the Ionian mode. Whew, finally, that craziness is over. So those are all the modes. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and then Ionian. Now you are smarter and not any better of a player at all. But there is hope. There is a purpose behind the modes. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's the major problem with the way that modes are normally taught. Normally they're taught in relatives instead of parallels. Let me show you this thing here real quick. So if we take the key of C major and we lower the third note, the sixth note, and the seventh note, instead of playing the regular three, six, and seven, we lower those like that. You don't have to play this yet, just follow along here, just watch what I'm doing. This set of notes right here begins and ends on C. It's kind of like the major scale, only we've changed a couple of the notes. Now, this thing is not really like C major at all has nothing to do with C major, um, really. It, um, it begins and ends on the same note. You're gonna wanna end the song still on a C. So when we get to... We're still gonna wanna end the song on a C, just like if it was a major song. So C is still the home base for the song, but it has an entirely different landscape. And, different atmosphere. It's darker and moodier, more emotional, more sad, more scary, more depressing, more haunting, right? Okay, so this is the difference between C major and C minor is like an entire different shift in like this is a whole other landscape, right? Two different, entirely different colors that have almost nothing to do with each other, except that they share that note. You're still going to come back to that C, but is it a major C or is it a minor C? Huge, huge difference. Let's do one more of these. Remember, we lowered the three, the six, and the seven to get that minor scale. So let's go to the key of A. This is regular, regular A major scale. Cool. So if we take the third note, that'd be this one, and the sixth note, and the seventh note, and we lower those right there, now we have this. So now, again, we have this really haunting, depressing, scary thing. This doesn't sound at all like C. This has nothing to do with C at all. Why would I even bring C up? Well, because all of the notes are exactly the same as C. But it really has nothing to do with C. That's just kind of like eh, an interesting little tidbit. Has nothing to do with the way that I play it. When I play the key of A minor, I'm thinking about I'm at home. Now I'm away from home. Now I'm even further away from home. And now I'm on the five of home. Now, it really wants to move back to home. This is home base, and this is the middle of my scale. The key of C has nothing to do with this at all, even though they're the exact same notes. So what? It's really cool, it seems like it should be important, but it's just not. So, the key of A minor right here is these notes, and the fact that it is, has the same exact set of notes as the key of C, totally irrelevant when I play in the key of A minor. A minor really has more to do with A major than it has to do with C major, because at least at the end of it, I'm coming back down to an A. There's no relationship at all to the key of C, except that it has all of the same exact parts, which is kind of like you and your mom, or your sister, or your dad, right? You've got like almost 100% of the same DNA. You're basically the same exact person, indistinguishable from any other being on the planet, except that you're not. You might be related, but you have entirely different views on a whole number of things, and there might be things you don't even ag agree on or get along with them on at all. So these are, even though you're like, you're the, basically the same exact person, you are not the same person at all. So that's like A minor and C major. Like, yeah, okay, so they, they look exactly the same. They're, they're made of the exact same stuff. They're relatives, but they have nothing to do with each other. A minor should sound like A minor. 
and yet at the end you should want to go to an A. And a C major sounds like a C major, and at the end you want to go to a C because C is home. So that's the difference between relatives and parallels. Parallels have the same root. They have the same home base. You're going to want to go to the same note at the end of it. So A major and A minor, those are parallels. And you can see how, oh yeah, we just took that scale and we altered that stuff, and now we've got an entirely different mood, right? Those are the parallels. The relatives are the ones that really have nothing to do with each other except for the, the kind of creepy, weird, interesting fact that they share the, all the exact same notes. If you play the key of C, beginning and ending on the sixth note, you have the key of A minor, and that's the sixth mode of C major, and that's why it's called A Aeolian, or A minor. But really, the important part here is, and I might have overstated this, A minor and C major have nothing in common except all the exact same notes. Seems like it should be a big deal. It's not. If you can get that much, we're ready to move on. Okay, so now I'm going to reteach you all those same modes that we talked about before, but now I'm going to keep all of the roots the same. We're going to keep C as the home base for all of these, and we're just going to start altering the scales and see what the different feels are, what the different auras are, what the different atmospheres that are created uh, with all these different alterations that we can make to this set of seven, eight, if you count the double C, uh, seven or eight notes here. So if we don't alter anything, we just have C major. And this is really super boring because you've already heard this a trillion times and this just sounds normal to you. So there's, there's nothing special here at all. It's just a major scale, like 95% or more of music is going to be in the key of blank major. C major, D major, F major, all those are the same. We're not going through how to build major scales here. We're just talking about how to alter major scales to come up with the different modes because that's a different workshop to get to the scale. So C major, it's the Ionian mode. Don't call it Ionian because everyone just calls it major. In fact, they don't even say major. They just say the key of C. Bam. They really mean the key of C major, the first mode of C major, the Ionian mode but no one's gonna say that unless they just wanna look like an idiot. They're gonna feel like they're, they're looking smart. They're not. So, key of C major is just no alterations at all. Let's talk about the next mode now, except this is not gonna be Dorian. We're not talking about the second mode anymore. We're not going from here to here. We're gonna keep C as our home base, and we've got a couple options here. Either we could go through all of them like I listed for you earlier, or we could just get that one weird one out of the way. You remember earlier in here, we had all of those different modes and I said at the end that Lydian right here, like it kind of is on its own. So we could go through all of these guys that are related and then get to the weird one. Let's just get the weird one out of the way. Lydian is special and on its own. Uh, and it sounds special too. It's, it's a pretty cool scale actually. So the Lydian mode is the, the fourth mode. And like we said before, it's also the one where you would sharp the four. So you just go to the fourth scale degree, one, two, three, four, and we sharp that. Cool. So now we're gonna play a regular C major scale, the Ionian mode, except we're gonna alter the four. We're going to raise it by a half step. And now we get the Lydian mode. This would be C Lydian. And if you're thinking, well, that just sounds terrible. I would never ever use that. You might be right. But I think the more you play it and the more you use it, it can have, it's kind of, it's kind of grows on you a little bit. This thing right here, having a scale that starts out with three whole steps, root, whole step, whole step, whole step, gives it that like heavenly, ethereal feel. And I've given you some songs here that use that um, a little bit. And the, it's, you, this might be uh, better used like at the end of a song where you just like want to have something that like. Right, so like it. It has that, just, the more you play it, like I said, the more it kind of, oh yeah, I could see where that might fit in in some cases. Um, so 
So that's the Lydian mode, and as you are starting to tell, like, oh yeah, that kind of has its own unique characteristics. It's just like a major scale, but it's got this one note that adds in this important spice, this important element, this other little flavor in there that kind of colors the, the whole rest of the notes because of this one thing has really changed the landscape, changed the atmosphere. And that's what modes do. That each one of them has its own unique feel. Let's talk about the unique feels of the other modes. So now we're getting into the list of modes that all are related. So we go back to the Ionian mode, talk about the major scale. So we just take that and now we're going to flat the seven. This is the seventh note and we're gonna play that one right there. And so now at this point we have This one has a lot bluesier feel. Right, so this one, mixed lady mode, it doesn't have that flat three that we would expect like in a really bluesy song. Missing that part of it, it's still got this really pretty three in there. But just got a little bit of attitude there at the top. So this is like. Benson song um, on Broadway and a bunch of others here that I've listed for you. Um, so you can find kind of a lot of songs that are in the Mixolydian mode and they're all going to kind of have that same vibe to them even if they're in different tempos and in different keys. If it's using the Mixolydian mode, it's just got that little extra bit of sass at the top of the scale. So now it's time for the second mode. You don't have to remember that it's the second mode. You should know though that it's like the Mixolydian mode. Except now we're also into flat that three. The one that I was talking about just a second ago that like feels really gritty and bluesy and dark. Now we have the flat three. So this thing right here now, we've got the flat seven, we've also got the flat three, and so this is gonna be like that, the Mixolydian mode, how it was like fun and kind of sassy, only it's got that sass and now we've added in like the extra dark element of the flat three. It's still not quite a blues yet, it doesn't have that like gripping, biting flat five in it. But it does have that flat three, so it definitely has a darkness to it that the Mixolydian mode did not. And now it's time for the sixth mode, Aeolian, also just regular minor, natural minor. So now we're taking the Dorian mode where we had the flat seven and the flat three, and we're also going to flat the six, and now it feels pretty dark. This is about as dark as you're gonna get, and still feel really stable. At the end of the song, by stable I just mean like it has a definite home. There's a place that you want to go to at the end of the song. It's not like up in the air and you can't really tell where a home is. It definitely has a home, but it's about as dark a home as you can get. So this is just a minor scale and you know if like 95% of music is in the Ionian mode, the major scale, then like another 4.9% is going to be in the Aeolian mode in a, in a minor key. And so uh, this, th all the rest of the modes make up a really tiny portion of uh, the rest of the songs. So Aeolian and Ionian together are kind of the main ones. And real quick here, I'm not supposed to mess with these scales until later, but I should tell you, if you've got a song that's legitimately in the key of C minor, these are all the same exact notes, by the way, as the key of E flat. So the two of those are relatives. So if I play for you something like, this would be like a pretty common pop song progression. At the end of the song, you might want to go here. And so it would feel like it was in C minor because you, you're wanting to go to C. However, if I go... That 
that doesn't feel wrong either. And in that case, home feels like E flat. So which one of those is right? They're all using the same exact notes, but am I going to C minor? Am I in the key of C minor? Or am I in the relative key of E flat major? It's kind of a toss up in this case. The one way you can make it not a toss up is if you add in this one note. The, a legitimate C minor song is also going to have that regular seven, um, especially when, and I'm going to get into trouble here because I'm not going to complete this, this thought here, but if you're on the five chord of the key, in this case the G chord, the five in a minor key probably should be major. So that means you're going to run into that note right there, that B. So if we go... definitely you have to go to C minor because we use that major five which incorporated the regular seven of the scale unless that didn't make any sense to you and you're like ah it sounded like you kind of went off the rails there yes I did so just ignore all the stuff I just said but uh, I did want to throw that in if that was interesting to you then you'll want to um, take a look at the either the songwriting workshop or the other um, scale workshops and stuff like that to see what in the world I was talking about with a five chord and junk like that all right enough of that nonsense let's move on to the next mode so now we're in the Phrygian mode. This, as you might remember, was the third mode, kind of irrelevant information. If we take what we already had, which was the Aeolian mode with the flat three, flat six, and flat seven, we add in the flat two, now we're at Phrygian, and Phrygian has its own flavor as well. So just like we had the Lydian scale that started off with all whole steps and kind of gave it like that, that ethereal heavenly feel, right? This thing starts off with a half step which is really, really kind of odd. So it has that thing at the beginning of it. We still have a C minor chord as our one chord, and we have the... Like it kind of feels like a regular minor scale, except it's got that half step at the beginning. As a lot of people describe this as like Spanish or Gypsy, I think that the Spanish Gypsy mode or Spanish Gypsy uh, scale is another name for this one. So that's the Phrygian mode, and that's the flavor that it has. So hopefully this is all making a little bit more sense than it did a little while ago, and we were just like going through all white notes and talking about what those modes were called. So now each one like has its own unique flavor, and it's kind of built on another scale. We took another scale, and we flatted one more note. We took that one, we flatted one more, and each time we flat one more note, it just kind of adds another dimension. Well, this is Locrian now, and this is where we're just we're just insane here. So we've got uh, where we had the Aeolian, where we flatted the three, the six, and the seven. Just a second ago, uh, I'm sorry, there we go. We, just a second ago, we also flatted the two, so all that's left to flat is the five. Now we are playing all of the notes that were not in the C major scale. If you're playing in the key of C, the only five notes you want to not hit are these guys right here. And now with the Locrian mode, we're hitting all of those. And this one, I can't really find a good example of a song that is just in this mode the whole entire time. This mode gets used at various times, uh, but for the most part, it just it feels really super weird. Like the the one chord is a diminished chord, which is unstable, and so the whole thing about like having a home base is like that's where you you go to like that's that's the the rock of the whole song. That's the place you want to go at the end of it. Right? It feels like, ah, yes, I got there. Well, the problem with this one is when we finally get there, the there is a diminished chord, and diminished chords are inherently unstable. They want to go somewhere. So you finally get home, and home is just really unsettling, unrelaxing, hopefully unlike your home. <laughs> this one is just like, you get there, and it's like, oh, but it's supposed to go to there or somewhere else. I don't know, but it's definitely definitely not resolved at all. So that's why the Locrian mode is a really difficult mode to write in because there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to end the song. It's just going to keep on feeling like it's kind of homeless.
So that's all the major modes. That's all that there is. You take major, major scales, and you alter all of the notes that you possibly could, and we come up with these modes, and those are the numbers that they're in. Now let's go back and take a look at that chart that we had before, and hopefully that will make more sense. So again, here are the modes with their numbers in the traditional uh, style and order that they're taught, where you learn the modes and you learn their numbers. This is D Dorian, this is E Phrygian, F Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, B Locrian, and then we're back to C. And then here is the new order that we're going to try to learn them in. Lydian could either go up here or it could go um, after all of those. But you're going to start with the seven, altering the seven, then you add in the three, add in the six, add in the two, and then lastly you add in the five. And by that time, by by the time you're in Locrian mode, you've altered so much that it's it's really hard to find a, a home base for that thing. That is all of the modes in, I think, a better and more usable and more understandable order, but you could still alter the modes. So maybe this is the point where you just want to leave it and go, all right, cool, I understand modes now, and you can leave, and now you understand modes better than 95% of people out there who use these same terms. However, if you're interested enough, let's get crazy with the modes. So some of you caught this, I lied a little while ago. I, when I said, well, on the Locrian mode, now we're altering everything possible. Well, we still haven't altered the four at all. Now, technically, if we alter the four, if we lower the four, we can't raise the four or else we're gonna end up on the same note. But if we lowered the four, we'd end up on the three. So that's kind of not altering it. So kind of I wasn't lying because if you alter the four down, then you just end up on one of the notes we started with in the first place, the three of the major scale. However, if you're already in the Locrian mode, and then you lower this thing, now we actually are on we're a note that we're not already using in the scale. And so the diminished whole tone scale is one that's used um, especially in right before you hit the end of a song that's in a minor key. So if I was in, for example, the uh, like an F minor, if I'm playing an, an F, F minor, and I play like a something like this, and I'm about to go home, before I go home, if I go, if I use this scale. That might not have been the best use of it. Let's try again. keys right before you hit the end of it, this diminished whole tone scale feels extremely jazzy and uh, actually pretty cool. And some of you are catching on to, well, wait a second, there's still one note left that you didn't alter. You could still alter the one and you can lower that to right there. And what about that one? Sorry. No, it doesn't work because now you've altered the root of the scale and the, the root is what tells you what the scale is. So once we lower it to here, it's no longer a C anything. Now it's a C flat something. Or, sorry, really boring. This is just a B major scale. So once we take a C down to here, we take the, the diminished whole tone scale, which is crazy, awesome scale, and we alter the last possible note. Now we've just ended up on B major. Through and we go, oh, that's right, that was just plain and boring. So, the diminished whole tone scale really is taking every one of the notes possible. We're lowering every single note, and there's nothing left to be altered unless we alter one of the other modes. Like, what if we took the Lydian mode and we just flatted the seven of that? So, now we have that was our remember, that was the one that at the end of the. We played that little thing at the end of our song. Now we're just going to flat the seven here, and now we have. So now I've got like that, that sassy flat seven thing. We also have this ethereal sharp four thing. 
So it's like a dark, it's like this really heavenly thing with this really dark. So it's kind of a, like a colliding of two different opposite feels. Really ethereal, really bluesy. So Lydian dominant, it's not as uncommon as you would think. Well, can't we make anything dominant then? Yeah, pretty much we could. So we could take Phrygian, which you might remember is the one with the lowered three, six, seven, and two. This is before we lowered the five to get the Locrian mode. So if we take that and uh, we just make this one right here major, because that's what dominant means. Dominant means that the three is major and the seven is flat. Well, if this is C, that's a major three, that's a flat seven. So in a Phrygian dominant, we'd have to keep all the Phrygian stuff, except make sure that we have raised three, regular, normal three, and lowered seven. Seven's already lowered, no problem. So as long as we change this one up, then now we've got the Phrygian dominant scale, and it still starts with that half step at the beginning. So it still has that like really weird feel at the beginning has that kind of feel at the beginning of the scale. Now we're about to run into one that has that feel later on in the scale, but this one starts off with that one. Phrygian dominant. It's still like a major three. It should, should feel happy, but the fact that we start off with that half step makes it feel that kind of mysterious thing. And harmonic minor is the one that sounds very much like that, except we're just gonna go back to the regular Aeolian mode. If we take the regular Aeolian mode and we just take that seven back up. So now we're only lowering the three and the six instead of lowering the three, the six and the seven like we did in the Aeolian mode. Now we have something called harmonic minor. So this is lowered three and lowered six only. So now we still have that weird feel that we had before, but now it's happening at the top of the scale. described as like Arabian, Egyptian, some, for some people Spanish or Middle Eastern. Harmonic minor. Melodic minor is another option as well. So with melodic minor, we're going to keep um, the six and the seven raised. So it's just basically a major scale only with only a flat at three. So we just take the three, we flat that, and we play this. feels totally major at the top. You expect to have just a major scale coming down, but right at the end, it's got that twist. Now, I will point out here too, if you're practicing this scale, when you practice it, you're supposed to play a raised six and seven going up and a lowered six and seven coming down. So technically, you've got a raised six and seven up and a lowered six and seven coming down. But the real magic of this thing is the raised six and seven because it gives it that major feel at the top where it still has that lowered three on the bottom. Okay, just a couple more here. We've got a whole tone scale, and this is the one that we start out with at the very beginning lesson where you just play all whole steps. So root, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step. I know that only uses up six notes instead of seven, whatever. That's fine. We're just creating landscapes here. So that gives you a certain feeling, that can be a thing. That's a collection of notes. We're going to call it a scale. It's built out of whole tones, whole steps. So we're going to call it the whole tone scale. We could also alternate between half steps and whole steps. If we start with a half step and then go whole step and then half step and then a whole step and then half step and then whole step and then half step and then whole step. Now we're dealing with the diminished scale there are two diminished scales. This one is called the half whole scale because it starts with a half step and then a whole step. And if we alternate that, of course, we have the whole half diminished scale. So that is also a diminished scale because it's also half steps and whole steps, but it's in the reverse order. It starts out with a whole step and then a half step instead of the other way around. And now we're just getting crazy after this. We could go uh, three half steps and then one half step. So we go up three half steps and then one half step, three half steps, one half step, three half steps. So it's like that weird uh, Egyptian thing that we had going on in uh, the 
harmonic minor only is just happening all over the place. It's only exclusively that thing, which to me has like too much of that flavor, like in the in the harmonic minor scale. It has that like that thing, but it's just at a certain part of the scale. And this one is just all over the place. It's just all that one spice piled in. And of course, if you just play all half steps all the way through, you end up playing every single note on the piano. And that's called a chromatic scale. And that, at this point, like, well then, yes, all of these are right notes at some point. Yeah, so hopefully if you're doing this, uh, this is also called a 12 note or 12 tone music, and it's just where you basically don't have a key. You can just play any note as long as it sounds good or the way that you intended, then it's all allowed. There's no real key. As you might be getting by now, the possibilities on this stuff is kind of endless. You can kind of pick any set of notes that you want in your song and then just have that be your scale. But there are still a couple other ones that are really common and are official scales that you'll hear uh, the names thrown around a lot. So we should get into those. The pentatonic scale is just the major scale taking out the four and the seven. Honestly, if you're improvising, especially like if you're in Kloppel Academy and you're doing the improvisation sections on that, you'll notice that the four and the seven of the scale are, um, they sound correct less frequently than the rest of the notes. So if you play a one or a two or a three, you can pretty much noodle around with those all day and those are gonna sound good. The five and the six, sound pretty good too, almost always, no matter what the chord is. The only ones that really give you trouble are every now and then you'll hit a four and be like, oh, that sounded lame, or you'll hit a seven and it won't quite fit in. So those are kind of the most dangerous notes of a nice, safe, happy uh, major scale. So if you take the four and the seven out, you get a pentatonic scale. And those notes are just really pretty and safe. There's nothing at all weird in there. Uh, so the pentatonic scale is a really common one for just like noodling around, improvising. And it honestly, after you play it for a while, when you leave the four and the seven out, it has its own kind of characteristics also. Now I wanna show you also on the guitar, the pentatonic scale is significant again in a different way than it is on the piano because on a guitar you play something like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That should sound just like a major scale, right? But if you take out the four and you take out the seven, then you're just left with one, two, three, five, six, one. And if that's one, that'd be a two. So you could have, let's see here, we play the one and then we've got two, three, five, six, one, two, one, six, five. So guitarists like the pentatonic scale a lot because it just sits really nicely on the, on the fretboard, on the neck. You can just kind of keep your hand in the same position and you have all of the notes from the pentatonic scale and they're all safe notes. So whatever key you're in, you just play that pentatonic scale and it's pretty for sure that you're not gonna hit anything that sounds too weird. Another advantage to keeping your hand in the same spot is that you can also move really quickly through it. So guitarists like it because they can play it quickly and it sounds good and they don't have to think about what they're playing necessarily. They can just kind of go through the scale as fast as they want and sound really, really cool. But back to piano. So we've got the pentatonic scale, which is just the one, the two, the three, the five, and the six of your major scale. And then if you want to, you could throw in the flat three. So one, two, flat three, three, five, six. And this is known as the Kansas City Blues Scale. And it kind of works on a blues. So the Kansas City Blues scale, it's, it's a pretty happy, safe scale, but it's just got that little flat three in there to add just a little bit of attitude and make it sound a little bluesy. Now, if we want the opposite end of the spectrum, if we didn't want to be uh, nice and happy with a little bit of edge, if we want to be mostly edge, then we could take out all of the pretty tones, the two and the three that are sitting in there, and the, the six, take out all that pretty stuff and just put in everything else. The flat three, the four, the five, and the flat seven that we already talked about why that one has a lot of edge to it. So if we play this. Now this is what a lot of people would just play as a blues scale. They just consider this to be the blues scale and it kind of is. But now if we had the same thing. got a 
lot more edges, definitely way bluesier, but it's not officially an actual blues scale. We would call that a minor pentatonic scale. Again, just five notes, one, two, three, four, five notes, and we were, we were getting all the gutsy notes in there and none of the pretty, pretty notes, the two and the three and the six. If we want to turn this officially into an actual real blues scale, there's one more really bluesy note, one really gutsy, dirty, grimy note, and that's the flat five or the sharp four. So if we go one, flat three, four, sharp four or flat five, five, flat seven, one. Now we've got a really... really official blues scale. It's got all those bluesy notes we were using before, plus this note right here. Honestly, this note, I mean, we've got entire workshops on the, the blues, but this note right here is really more about like bending down a five, or like pulling up a four. So it's either acts as a sharp four, you're putting it against a four, or it could be considered also a flat five. If you were putting it against the five, because we can't really bend notes on the piano, we either get to play that note, or we get to play that note, or we get to play that note. So that one right in there is kind of the bent note that's in between the four and the five, which makes it an official blues scale. There's only one note missing from this blues scale, and that would be in this one right here, and that is this seven. There are parts of a blues where you are really gonna want this note right here. So if you play just the blues scale that we had before, it skips right over that important note. So if you add that one in, some people would not consider this a blues scale, that they don't like that note being in there at all. But uh, during the five chord, and we're not gonna go into how to play the blues here, because there's a, like I said, it's, a, it's a, got its own workshop. But on the five chord of the blues is where you're gonna wanna play that one. Okay, so that's the kind of the two blues scales, either with or without that major seven, the, the raised seven, the regular seven from the regular major scale. And that's what modes are, and that's how you'd use them. The reason you want them is they all each have their own special, unique sounds and characteristics, and there are times, once you get really familiar with those modes and their sounds, there'll be times where you just, it feels like that's what really what you wanna use. Now I will throw in here, it should take a normal student um, several years to get familiar with any small set of these. You know, just getting familiar with major and minor takes a long, long time. You got 12 majors and 12 minors, that's a lot. And then you throw in there, you got a flat to seven, and now you've got mixolydian, right? And that's its own characteristic, its own feel, and its own, its own set of songs that it's going to create, this own, this mood, this atmosphere. So. Each time you alter something, now you've got 12 of those to practice, one for each key, so C, D flat, D, E flat, one for each of those. So you gotta get familiar with each of those, and then just the, the sound overall. What does Mixolydian sound like? What does it feel like? What does it want to do? It's got its, its own tenor, it's its own, own, well, I've used a lot of adjectives here, but you get the idea. Then we move over to Dorian, and then that's its own thing. So each one of these really has its own world that's gonna open up to you once you start playing. It's not like, oh, so I'll just practice my modes and then I'll know what the modes all sound like. It doesn't work that way. You really have to kind of build a relationship with each of the unique sets of notes to see what they can do and what they wanna do on their own. And then one last little tidbit before I sign off here is that this is all kind of fake because the truth is that modes are most frequently used not in an entire song, but a mode is used during a one little section of a song or during just one chord. So, for example, if you're playing like a D minor chord, right? Well, a D minor chord, well, what should I play over a D minor chord? I'm in the key of C, I could play a C pentatonic scale. That would be all right. 
But if I'm on the D minor, I'm probably gonna wanna pull notes out of the D Dorian scale. So I'm thinking of D as home. And what, these are all the notes. These are all the notes that I'm going to want to play during that D minor chord. Well, as you probably know if you've played much music, that a single chord probably isn't going to last that long. So you might get a, a D minor that goes to a G and you'll just have... Right? You might just get a second with that D before it moves on to a G or moves on to something else. So. Once you get familiar with these modes and what they do, that's cool. We can write songs that have each of those characteristics. And I've given you the lists of songs in there that use the different modes and stuff. But then, the, especially the more obscure ones, like the alt scale that we talked about, or the Locrian mode, all those that like seem like, well, there's no song that the, this goes with. That's because they're usually just used during a small section. We talked about how on the uh, alt scale, the diminished whole tone scale, how that is usually just used for a second. Before we go to the, a minor chord, a minor one, it's used on the five before it goes to the one. So in a lot of cases, these, these scales, these modes that you're practicing, these sets of notes that you're getting used to their feels, that's just going to be one little snippet during a song where you get a special chord in a special place acting as a certain thing, and you go, you know what's going to sound really cool here? My Locrian mode is going to fit in really well here, or something else. So all of that means, I guess, that you just have to get used to all of the modes, and they're each going to create their own scene or their own setting. They're each going to have their own color, and you're going to use those colors either throughout an entire song or if it's just too bright a color, too harsh a spice, um, then you're going to just use that during a small little segment of another song. And how you would use all those and what chords go with each of the modes is like another three-hour workshop which we'll do if that's what you're looking for. But uh, hopefully at least this is cleared up for you. What in the world are modes? Why do they exist? And why would we ever teach them? I'm never going to play a C scale from D up to D. That's right. If it seemed weird, it was weird. You're never going to do that. This has nothing to do with that. Hopefully that makes sense. If so, you've made intense progress. Good luck. Have fun.